Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. As part of your comprehensive news analysis, today we'll be discussing five important topics out of the Hindu newspaper. But before we begin, a very happy new year to all of you. It's been a while I've been on this platform, but it's good to see you now in this new format of CNA. And I hope that you're able to use this format more effectively for your preparation. Before we begin, as always, please do like, share and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of the videos. And as always, as the last four sessions, once this session is over, the five topics which we've covered, you will have a good quiz on, which will be uploaded on the Telegram channel. So if you've not subscribed to our ch Telegram channel, you can look, look at that link in the, in the description below and you can subscribe to our Telegram channel so that you can also revise as you prepare. So before we begin, Today, we have five topics which deal with internal security, with Ramasa sites, with defense, and generally we have tried to keep it a set of topics which can help you in your larger preparation. This session is live as you know, but if you are not able to see us live, you can always watch this video later, so do share it with your friends. So with this, let's enter the first topic. The first topic is about the 9th December skirmish near the Tawang sector between India and China. So as always, what we're going to do is, I'm going to give you an overview of the whole topic. Thereafter, we'll go into the PPT and try to understand the basic points which the article is trying to tell us. And thereafter, we will revise once we've done three topics and then five. So the CNA format for me remains the same. We will try to follow the same thing. First, a basic overview, then detailed analysis, and then revision the same session so that this one hour is as productive as possible. So what is this topic? See, we know that the Tawang sector is a very important and strategic sector in the eastern part of India. And wedged between China and Bhutan, it has a very important location. But we have a very interesting report and a lot of maps which this article provides us. And therefore, it gives us a very import, important insight into what is happening in this sector generally. So why is Tawang important? The first question. Tawang and the Yangtze Plateau is a very important plateau and a very important sector because it overlooks the Sela Pass. So basically, anything entering and exiting the Tawang sector happens to the Sela Pass itself and the Yangtze Plateau within the Tawang sector actually overlooks the Sela Pass. So if there is anybody who has at higher ground, he, he or she of that country itself will have a better visibility on all the roads entering this sector itself. Therefore, India and China over a period of time have been shifting the LSE. And as you know, the LOC is a proper ceasefire line which has legal basis within the whole international sector. However, LSE is just an agreement between India and China. Therefore, India and China, specifically China, tries to always shift the LSE as much as possible. And therefore, they are on a lower ground and that is the strategic advantage which India has and we are on a higher ground and I'm going to show you all the maps and explain to you the whole sector itself. So the first point is Tawang and the Yangtze Plateau itself is very very important because it looked towards Sela Pass. So let's do one thing. Let's look at the maps itself and it will give you a better understanding. See, when you look at the Yangtze Plateau which is this map, there are two sides to it. This is the first side, this is the Indian side, this is the Chinese side. So when you look at the Indian side, we are actually at the higher ground and we have outposts on the ridge line. Therefore, these six outposts along with the Indian forward base gives us a higher ground. Therefore, we overlook the Sela Pass and China's visibility of the Sela Pass, the Tawan sector, as of right now is obstructed. On the other side, when you look at the Chinese side, they are on the sloping part of this plateau. Therefore, they are constructing roads and camps and they are now trying to create a lot of infrastructure. That is the basic point of this article itself. The pass itself, the Sela Pass itself is extremely important because it is the only pass through which you can enter the Tawang sector, the Arunachal and the eastern sector itself. And we are right now constructing a tunnel there which should be completed by the end of the year. Now, what is the point of the article? The article is technically trying to point out that though India has a forward base and sixth outpost on the ridge line itself, when you look towards the satellite imagery towards the Chinese sector, what we are seeing is that they're developing a lot of roads in this sector. And the recent skirmish which happened on 9 December itself, where we saw very dramatic videos itself, was not 
just a random attempt. What China is technically planning is that they are trying to increase the force or the reduce the time of deployment in this sector. So when you look at the Indian sector, when you try to go up this plateau, what we see is that the plateau itself, the roads on the Indian sides are eroded. There is a lot of landslides which are happening and it's a dirt track. So if India has to deploy a lot of resources in this sector, it would take time. On the other hand, China, what they've done is, and you can see it very clearly here, have constructed a road in this area. I'll remove this. You can see that they're actually constructing a lot of roads in these areas. And they are trying to make sure that their movement up this slope is quicker, is quicker. So if you look at the next set of maps, this is the Chinese side. That is the Indian side. All skirmishes are right now happening on this line itself. And what they are trying to do is they are trying to get India to just retreat a little bit back so that they can retreat to change the status quo as it says. Change the status quo to a higher ground so that they can have a better look towards the Sela Pass and generally the roads which are going towards this area. Therefore, therefore, what China is trying to do is it's, trying, it's playing a double game. First, it is reinforcing the infrastructure on, uh, on their side. Though India has a lot of presence, numerically we are actually much, much higher than the Chinese. But if it comes to a larger long-term investment, or skirmish itself, India is at a disadvantage as of right now. And though we have now started to introduce a lot of infrastructure projects, that is the second game which China is playing. Because if we start to do too much activity in this area, it will be seen as Chinese as escalation. And therefore, they will use this diplomatic channels to create pressure on India. So before we go into the points which are given in the article itself, what is this basic, what is the basic point of this article? As I said, this is trying to explain why is that the Tawang sector has now become extremely active. It has become extremely active for one reason, which is that it is a very strategically located area. Yangtze Plateau looked towards the Sela Pass. Sela Pass is the only in and out of this whole sector itself. India as of right now has a higher ground. This is the first point. Now, second is that we have invested a lot in creating outposts and forward posts. However, we have not invested in the infrastructure or the border infrastructure, specifically the roads, which go towards this area. Therefore, with erosion, with landslides, there will be a what we call as a lethargy. The response is going to be slow because the movement of troops is going to be slow. On the other hand, when we look at the satellite imagery on the Chinese side, what we see is a lot of roads have been developed and these roads are all weather and they are now trying to escalate issues so that they can come down this slope somehow so that they can look towards India more because they are on the other side of the ridge line right now. And the larger point of this article is what India, what India has to see right now is China is playing a double game. And the double game is that they are trying to push in a lot of infrastructure development in that area so that over a long period of time, they can have a better strategic movement in this sector. But also if India does the same, they go to the international forum saying that India is doing activities along the LAC. As I said, LAC is an informal line. It is not a legally binding international line, unlike the LOC with Pakistan. This, 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 is, the, this is the problematic aspect, be it Pongang, so be it the Galwan sector, be it Tawang, LAC is something which is a mutual agreement. And this is what China is playing with. So I hope before we move on, and I would like you to comment in the comment section itself, you understand the basic point, that you understand the larger understanding here, what we are trying to argue. Is this making sense, everybody? Come on. That the, what is the larger concept and the maps. Then we'll go into the basic article itself. Yes, it is. Perfect. So well, let's see what the article is trying to point out and we will see how you can mold it in the answer itself. So now we are recapping, but we are recapping it through the through the PPT. So on 9 December 2022, India and China had a clash in the Yangtze sector of the Tawang, India-China border as we know. 
Now, this is one of the more serious skirmishes since the Galwan Valley clash in 2020. And since then, we have actually seen that there has been a strategic de-escalation in the Pongango, Pongsangso sector. So, in the western sector, we have seen de-escalation, but now China has shifted its attention towards the eastern sector. Now, the question is, why Tamang? Why is it so important? It is important because it is wedged between China and Bhutan. It's a very important area. And because the peaks are above 5,700 meters, what it gives you is that the Yangtze Plateau gives you a very good visibility in this sector. So if you are at the Yangtze Plateau, you can actually look down and the whole Tawang sector is showing. As of right now, India crucially controls the ridge line and we are on the higher sector. The Chinese overwatch over the Sela Pass as of right now is very limited and that allows India a very crucial advantage in the Tawang sector itself. So the Tawang sector, Sela Pass entry gate into this sector itself. Now, what these maps are trying to tell you, it says India's defense along the plateau is a network of six frontline outposts along the LSE and in addition to that, lower into the plateau, we have an Indian forward base. But then the article points out that this area, the roads which go towards Indian side have been eroded. There's a lot of landslides. And if India needed to deploy more, it would take more time. So if there are 50,000 men as of right now, for example, if we had to deploy 50,000 more, it would take at least seven to eight days. And thereafter, it gives you, it gives you an image of the Chinese side. And on the Chinese side, what it gives you is images of these very well-made roads and new dirt tracks which are being created so that the Chinese can mobilize quickly. The question is, who can mobilize quickly? And mobilization as of right now, India is at a disadvantage. India is at a disadvantage because mobilization will be slow and we need to make sure that the Chinese border infrastructure is matched on the Indian side also. Thereafter, what the article again points out is that the Chinese are trying to make sure, are trying to make sure that if there is escalation, that is their basic point, they will from time to time provoke India. And if they are, exam for example, at this point, and they are able to just move it even 100, 200 meters on the ridge line, they will have access to the Yangtze Plateau, they will have a better visibility of the Sela Pass, and that is their basic point. And what they are also pointing out is that this is not, this 9 December thing was not a random thing which happened. On this whole sector, on this whole line, this ridge line, I'll make it more clear. As it says, see, you see, on this ridge line, they are from time to time pushing so that they can move the line a little bit further inside. And the article tries to point out that India has to be very cautious of how it responds. So what explains these clashes? What explains these clashes is that the new infrastructure development on the Chinese side has given them more confidence in that regard. Chinese are, or the China is compensating for the tactical disadvantage by making sure that it, it can rapidly deploy forces in this sector and the PLA remains at a disadvantage right now when it comes to a small skirmish because numerically we have a better position also and better number also but over a significant conflict the PLA has developed much better infrastructure people's liberation army which is China's army therefore it has the access to this area quickly and over a period of time it can deploy quickly so what lies ahead? This is the basic point. This is the basic point which we are trying to understand. And what li lies ahead is the fact that the border has created an escalation trap. This is a very interesting word for the first time used, can come in the mains examination. It's an escalation trap. For India, it is difficult to respond to the reality without not escalating. And if India is trying to escalate, then China is going to use its strategic advantage itself. Therefore, without strategic concessions, we cannot actually even match the same infrastructure. Therefore, India has to look for diplomatic means and other means of de-escalation. So it doesn't mean that India has to give up on this area, but the basic point of the matter is we have lost one small trick here, which is to make sure that the numbers are matched by infrastructure. We'll do a mains question in the end and we will see how we can 
we can expect a question from this area. This question is very important for mains examination and internal security and for the first time the paper itself is giving you such beautiful maps with illustrations on how what is happening. So from satellite imagery our foreign minister has already pointed out that satellite images are showing how Chinese are trying to escalate. India has to show a lot of character here by not allowing the Chinese to use their advantage and our disadvantage should also be converted into an advantage by making sure that over a period of time we are able to match the infrastructure. So this topic is very simple, very easy but very interesting in that regard and this is a new aspect. Remember the three words which you need to remember here is escalation trap, the fact that Tawang is very very important will, can be asked in the question itself and over and above that why is China trying to push so much in this sector. So this is the first topic. I hope this makes sense to you. Can we move forward to the second one? This makes a lot of sense. Everyone, come on. This is the advantage of this live platform that I have more output and input from you in that regard. Okay, sure, perfect. Now comes a very interesting article, but uh, it, it gives us a different type of satisfaction for some reason, which is, will sh shutting markets fix Pakistan's economy? And we know that Pakistan has been for a very, very long time in an economic crisis. Recently, it came out of the FATF list and now it can go to the IMF to actually. We'll talk about what are the steps which can be taken Simran. We'll talk about that when we look at the mains question. The basic point of the matter is let's try to see all the topics. All are interacting with each other and when we'll see. So, Pakistan is, Pakistani economy has been in a crisis. We know that. It's proper Chinese debt neo-imperialism, which is that they have just given as so much debt to the Pakistanis that they are they will never be able to repay it back. First. Second is the fact that because of terror financing, they were in the FATF grey list for a very long time. So IMF and World Bank were not ready to give any form of funding to them. Now they are out of that. So they have now asked for six billion dollars. So now I'm again going to give you the overview here. The problem with Pakistan right now is that yes, they are in debt. But you see how Russia-Ukraine interacts with everything. Russia-Ukraine crisis, what it has technically done is that it has escalated the prices of energy or what we call as fuel. So there's a 33 year high in petroleum and crude oil and generally what we call as energy, gas, natural gas, Russia being the major provider to Europe itself. So there's energy inflation as of right now. And Pakistan, much like India, has to import a lot of its energy, energy requirements via the Gulf or be it the uh, Saudi Arabians or this, the UAE sector. Now, they don't have money and their forex reserve has been depleting very quickly and for a very, very long time. Now, Pakistani people have been, you and cry, there has been about inflation and the food inflation is at 55%. is again very, very high. So, people have been saying to the Sharif government that you need to do something. You need to do something. Now, you look at the mind of the Pakistani economic minister and their prime minister. The answer to the question, do something, is... What you do is that you close all restaurants after 8.30 p.m., some of them 50% and 50% after 10 p.m. And what they are saying is that by closing these, by closing these, they will save on energy bill or energy resources. They will not have to supply electricity to these restaurants. So what they are trying to do here is they are trying to reduce their energy consumption by closing markets itself. And they are saying that any non-energy efficient fan manufacturer has to stop creating fans itself. So you now see how same type of problems can create two types of response. In India also has an inflation problem right now. But we are not talking about closing markets. We are talking about make, having resilient, resilient, sustainable solutions. Rather, because their forex is so low, they are saying close markets. Close the markets and allow the energy to go down, energy consumption to go down, which they, which is a double-edged sword. Obviously, if you are going to close markets, that is going to have a cascading effect on the economy itself. So, this article 
as much as it is absurd this solution tells you how political intervention is so important so it's about governance here it's about governance here governance can make or break a country and as of right now pakistan you see is breaking its own economy in order to stop the forex outflow so i'll give you the data but this whole article actually deals with a very simple point if there is energy inflation what do you do and the answer which the pakistanis are giving is close all shops close all markets so that so that the energy consumption goes down electricity consumption will go down so you don't have to import that and they are saying that they will be able to save close to 64 billion dollars in this but as the article itself says and their media is saying it's a homeopathic remedy to a terminal disease and this is the way the whole article is trying to show you that pakistan is not understanding the core issue the core issue is you reduce your defense spending you have been asking for certain parts of india you th that is all absurd you you have been a problematic neighbor to india for a very very long time you fund terrorist organizations that is not a problem that is not forex that will not save the economy what will save the economy is close the markets this is how short sighted their vision is so this article is both economics it's about governance and it's about how these two things go together so pakistan's solution to the delay in the 1 billion dollar coming from the imf from the forex reserve and the same thing happened in 1998 also in 1998 what they did is that they actually the then they said that stop drinking tea because tea import is too much right now it's about not using the electricity itself the point here is very simply very simply that the solution to the issue is wrong it's not about having a better relationship with india it's not about having a better relationship with the world itself it's not about reducing defense spending it's about closing markets so this topic is very simple but it's about governance it shows you how we have been trying to manage fire fighting the same inflation but with better better understanding better rule better understanding of the economy and better remedial measures also so in the face of an unrelenting financial crisis and dwindling foreign exchange reserves the past pakistani government has come up with measures to reduce their energy bill and what is the measures the measure is markets and restaurants will close at 8:30 pm and 10 pm local time in a bid to save electricity they will also ban the production on of inefficient fans that will help cut the electricity use by 30% the reason why this is happening is because their forest for a forex foreign exchange reserve which is the num, uh, amount of dollars they have is as of right now at the lowest possible and they only have import coverage of 6 weeks at 9 billion dollars it had gone as low as 2 billion dollars they are trying to fire fight a situation in which they will come to a situation in they in which they will have a forex exchange crisis in which they will have nothing to pay for their imports itself over and above that their inflation 24.2% but perishable items 55% and the delay in the imf release of 1 billion dollars has created a cascading effect and the piecemeal solution which the pakistani government is giving is close the markets so that the energy consumption goes down now what is the core issue here which is more important for us the core issue is that there is a global economic crisis and this we've been talking about in about cnf since november december when we're talking about russia ukraine i always talk about the fact that how russia has succeeded in showing that when it comes to energy they can have a major impact major impact over everybody at this point of time and what the russia ukraine crisis has done is it has increased the prices of energy now every country has its own solution uk changed its prime ministers the india has been trying to manage it by offsetting and trying to make sure that our forex 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 reserve is not depleting at the rate and having fata what are called free trade agreements with countries trying to substitute what we call as the dollar de dollarization so we are trying to do that but pakistani solution to this global economic crisis is that we will make sure that our peaceful solution energy consumption should go down and the inflation 
will automatically spiral out because once once you are going to go for such a piecemeal approach people will lose confidence in the government itself and then there can be a bank run situation also now one thing which they are relying on is saudi help saudi arabian help and chinese help and as of right now they the prime minister is pleading saudi arabia and china to bail out to give some money so that they are not in a forex exchange crisis at it that dip, at this point of time over and above that the point is they don't understand the core issue reduce your defense spending have a long term robust relationship with india so that and both in energy and trade so that you have a better economy itself so the question why are we talking about the pakistani economy the point is not that we are discussing the pakistani economy we are discussing a solution to a problem what we are trying to understand this is why the the hindu is telling telling you this that see how the same type of problem can have different solutions i am giving you this because this is a cautionary tale in the mains question there can be a very simple question that how do you tackle inflation how do you tackle the energy crisis this is not the way you do it this is the cautionary tale as a upsc aspirant you need to know which way to go which way not to go and if you are going to the interview there can be a question that do you think that pakistan's peacemeal approach is justified or will give you any solution so whatever we are doing here, here actually has a purpose and the purpose purpose here is to understand can there be a solution like this no that is the basic point which i am trying to make here make sense this topic the first two topics done first we try to understand the tawang issue and this one can we move forward crisis in the neighborhood is not good that is true but somehow our neighbor likes to be in a crisis for some reason yes we should be neutral we are we, i am talking about and we are discussing this topic as an economist i don't care if it's pakistan it's china is it bhutan it's nepal it's about how you don't manage it could be any economy the fact of the matter is pakistan has put itself in this situation itself it can actually significantly reduce its defense spending and it can actually offset this crisis itself but it's not finding that solution india can help but india is ready to help we have always been the bigger one in this and we need to have a better relationship with pakistan but that can come only from pakistan itself okay let's move to a uh, interesting two ta articles both discussing because this sunday issue had a emphasis on ramasar sites and we have a new type of understanding developing with regards to disease now this topic deals with gs paper 3 talks about science and technology and environment and a new aspect aspect related to how migratory bird species ramasar sites are also now becoming a threat to generally the bird population and human population in the areas where these migratory bird species are going so let's again try to understand the topic there are two two basic articles one is on assam which is a encouraging story species have increased but what is more interesting is the kerala one now what the first article points out again i am going to give you the overview and then we are going to go forward the first point is the first point is that in kerala where we have ramasar sites or wetlands itself 80% of duck production what we call as duck farming happens at this point of time and in wetlands we have migratory bird species coming from different parts of central asia parts of china even as far as russia and at this point of time kerala is reeling under what we call as the avian influenza avian flu bird flu h5n1 whatever you want to call it and there have been four outbreaks in the past 3 to 4 months and now scientists and the different experts are pointing out that we need to see the correlation we need to see the correlation between migratory species migratory species and how bird flu is bird flu is spreading because this type of tangential connection has not been made till this point so what this article technically is trying to point out that bird flu in kerala has now become much much more bigger and has now become a problem related to wetlands and migratory bird species this is the first point which the article is pointing out the second point which the article is pointing out is that we need to look for indicators is the salinity increasing in the soil 
is the pH changing? Are there indicators which can help us predict? See, H5N1 bird flu, from bird to bird it spreads very quickly. Human to human is very rare, but human to bird, bird to human is there. So we get do get influence. Bird flu does spread to humans, but from birds. It's not human to human. It's not like COVID. But the basic point of the matter is that if new strands of the bird flu are coming to India via migratory bird species itself and wetlands are becoming an issue and Ramasar sites are now in focus, then we need to find a solution. And that is what the article is trying to point out that we need to have further research in this area in order to create an association between Ramasar sites, wetlands and the fact that the avian influenza, the bird flu itself is changing its form, it's coming in different forms from time to time because of this migration itself. So this is the first point which is being pointed out in this article. The second article is about the the Porbeel, which is Assam's Freshland Lake, the only Ramasar site in Assam itself. And it has been in the news from time to time because there's a landfill which has been created near it. It is reeling under what we call as pollution. And more than that, urban planning has been encroaching into this lake itself. But an uh, encouraging news coming out of Assam is that with, uh, with all this pollution, with all this damage, the species of birds coming to Assam, coming to this wetland, to this Ramasar site itself, has increased. And that is encouraging in the larger perspective of our preparation generally and for the ecosystem in that sector. So, first point, very simply is, we now have a new problem. And the problem is that wetlands, Ramasar sites, the whole poultry sector, the duck production, the duck farming in Kerala has been reeling under quite a lot of bird flu instances and now scientists are pointing out to a larger problem itself. So you again need to understand the two basic issues here. This is the basic point I try to make here is that you need to understand the basic point. If you understand that you will, that will be with you for a longer time. First is now migratory bird species are also a problem. Second is the fact that with Assam reeling under pollution and this whole sector reeling under pollution, there has been increase in the Ramasa, in the in the species. Now, then you will say, then you will say, why are we doing this topic? We are doing it because now the Deepor Beel wetland, Ramasar site, and the three in Kerala, which I'm going to tell you now become important. So when you're going to go to your static, this is how current affairs interacts with static. When you're going to go to the static, you are going to make sure that you read upon these four more closely because they were in the news itself. So you need to create, you need to create, H5N1 is the technical name of the bird flu, that is the virus, virus H5N1. So very simply, first revise the four which we are going to discuss here. Second, try to create a tangential relationship between this concept and in a mains perspective, now there can be a question and I'm going to I have a question in the end with regards to this topic. But I hope that you understand the basic point here again. Can we go into the nitty gritty if the basic point is clear? Everyone, come on. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I need your response. Come on. You are you are sitting there with the live chat. Use it more better. Yes, yes. Perfect. So I, this is the beauty of this new interactive way in which we want to do CNA because here I know what you are understanding and you can ask a question straight. So yes, perfect. Great. Great. So in Kerala, in Kerala, we have three very important Ramasa sites. The Webinar Lake, the Ashtamudi Lake and the Shastam Kota Lake. These three now become very, very important for you. Ironically, 80% of all duck farming in the Kerala sector happens in this sector itself. And now, now, the point is that this creates a chain. And the chain is that you need to now know the static behind them, their basic location. And as of right now, I'm giving you their names so that we can revise it here itself. Now, contact with migratory birds is likely triggering the current outbreak. And as it, it is pointed out here, 
the avian flu in kerala has been critically hitting the poultry industry and there have been five outbreaks in the last three to four months itself and now we need to conduct a diagnostic study of how we can sustain and make sure that these instances are reduced this is the basic point because it's a developing concept because it's a developing concept itself the point is that the question can come in that sense that do you believe that there's a need for this type of study so duck farming is one of the traditional farming systems in the state especially in the Kuntanad area itself and what they're pointing out is that we can do one thing whenever there is a increase in the instances of flu can we see indicators in the ecosystem itself which is water pH the salinity of the soil itself is it actually impacting is it actually impacting the larger concept there is a need for research maybe you can also do it you you are the future of India itself but the basic point is we need to create an understanding that in Ramasar sites are these wetlands showing indicators of pre what we call as pre flu sector or pre pre flu symptoms in that regard therefore Kerala's wetland which have which have more than 80 percent of the duck population itself is under the threat of what we call of the flu and we need to have a better understanding so this is the first point which this article I clubbed these two articles together because they made sense the basic point of the matter is that the Ramasar sites they have their own purpose in your preparation but now we have another issue which you need to understand now the second part of the article which was a very small article but an interesting one because the as I said the edition of the newspaper itself was about Ramasa sites in India is that there have been a lot of development projects happening in the only Ramasa site in Assam itself and now the new counting which has happened recently has shown 30 more species of avian varieties in this sector taking it to 26,747 birds belonging to 96 species in that regard in the southwestern sector of Guwahati a very important distinction about the Deepar uh, what what you call the Deepar Beel is the fact that it is the largest freshwater lake in Assam now before I go to the last topic let's try to revise because we are here we have to use our time well first topic we tried to understand the Tawang sector, how the Tawang sector and specifically the whole Yangtze, Yangtze plateau overlooks the Sela Pass and this whole sector itself and how India has a strategic location and it is on the higher ground on the ridge line and as of right now China has limited access to the Sela Pass but China has been investing quite a lot on the infrastructure on their side and they are now trying to figure out how to just escalate India or escalate this issue and get a better or change what we call it the word which is used is change the status quo where the retreat is at a higher ground so that they can look at the Sela Pass itself the first point second point was how India is in an escalation trap if India responds the problem is that it will amount to escalation and we also need to make sure that our eroded roads are better this is the first topic the second topic we try to understand how Pakistani economy is giving us a solution to a problem which everybody is seeing but it's a piecemeal solution it's a myopic vision of inflation and generally how you respond to these problems if there's an energy fuel crisis or what we call as energy inflation you don't ask everybody to close their shops because you want to reduce the energy consumption therefore decrease the imports of energy resources that makes no sense because that will have a cascading effect it could then make that inflation a deflationary trend also because there will be no consumption and the third topic we try to understand and fourth together were about Ramasar sites Ramasar sites generally important because of wetlands wetlands are from time to time in news we have now done four of them you need to remember them for the static understanding and over and above that we have now a new problem which is how you link migratory bird species and avian flus and in the era of pandemics it has it's a very interesting point that how scientists are trying to create an understanding that these migratory bird species are not innocent 
they are also spreading a lot of problem in that regard and the Assam story tells us that though there has been a lot of encroachment pollution and urban planning has not been that good near the only Ramasar site itself there is a prop there is an encouraging news coming out of it which is that there is more there are better or more species of birds coming to Assam in that regard but please remember a new angle which we've created here till this point everybody is with me no issues can we go forward Come on, come on. Yes, that's more like it. Come on. Yes. See, uh, Nantesh, the fact is that India is trying to make sure that we have certain kinds of international organizations. India is using international organizations to point out that China is using the escalation trap. But it's, it's the way we have to respond. We have to not leave this sector without falling into this trap in that sense. Okay. Yeah, immature governance of Pakistan, totally, totally. It's not that there are more bird species in Assam. If there are more bird species coming to a what wetland, it means the ecosystem is better, which is a good indicator of the health of that ecosystem in that sense. Okay. Uh, yes, Kishore, what is your doubt with regards to the Sela Pass? This, see, the Sela Pass is a very strategic pass which links Tawang sector with the rest of the as the whole northeastern sector it's the only in and out of that area and if you overlook that pass you look overlook all the roads in that sector okay is it possible to come in the mains that is why we're doing it here come on what is escalation trap escalation trap is that the person the person in front of you the country china is just creating certain infrastructure when they are doing it they're doing it covertly when we do it it becomes an escalation point okay the last topic and then we discuss the main question navy signs a contract for autonomous armored boats now this is again interesting for defense purposes gs paper 3 itself see the point here is the point here is there's a new wave of defense technology coming through what are called UAVs, unmanned vehicles. So we have, as of right now, unmanned aerial vehicles. We have the predator drone of the Americans being the most ruthless in that regard. We have different understanding developing within defense technology that human life is more precious. And you make all, all machineries as much as possible as autonomous, AI driven or machine learning or they are manned from joysticks or it's technically becoming unmanned that is the basic point so under a new initiative this initiative this word becomes important for you in the examination because they ask very standard questions with reference to this in the news what does it mean and the point is that under a new initiative initiative called sprint the navy as of right now and we we should be really proud that india India has a autonomous armored boat manufacturer in the form of Sagar Industries and the Sagar Defense Engineering Industries is technically taking close to, uh, it's taken its 75th order. We are planning to take 100 such boats. These are called unmanned autonomous armored boats in the way that there is no man on this. So if you lose it, you lose uh, expensive defense technology but there's no loss of human life so therefore saga defense engineering in india as of right now has the know-how to create the first armored autonomous boats and the word which is important for you is this sprint it's an initiative to promote the development of niche defense technologies and the fact of the matter is and the fact of the matter is we are trying to push it under make in india under the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, the fact that we can also make it. But the two things which you need to take forward, which you need to take, I'll take the question with regards to LSE, LOC, don't worry about that. We'll discuss that. I'm looking at your questions from time to time, don't worry about that. I'll discuss the basics of LSE and LOC also. So, right now, concentrate in this. The basic point of the matter is sprint, sprint initiative. When it comes in the examination, it is specific to unarmed, armed unmanned autonomous boats which is the 
company which is making it Sagar Defense Engineering Indian Navy is taking it under defense technologies from domestic companies and the beauty of this is that it has it is armed meaning it has its machine guns it can be manned from a different vessel itself and it, it technically uses robotics AI and machine learning to technically uh, use it as for patrolling and generally for defense sector so with this we complete the five topics we need to do for today so again a very small recap we talked about Tawang we then talked about the concept of inflation and Pakistan's solution to it thereafter we then talked about the Ramasar sites and now this which is defense technology now one of you asked me what is LAC LOC see LOC is line of control and LAC is line of actual control LOC is with Pakistan it's a ceasefire line proper line drawn after the 1947 war and it's a internationally recognized line this is a very important difference between LOC and LAC LAC on the other hand is a technically a disputed line because of the McMohan line technically being disputed between India and China and there is no legal basis for this line that is why you see that there is a mutual agreement that we will not use guns that is why they use different types of weapons makeshift weapons as made and LSE can change at any point of time without any international ratification of it so LSE is with China LOC is with Pakistan the basic difference is that ceasefire means that once you fight and when the war is over you say that right now Russia has gone for a unilateral ceasefire for their Christmas okay Perfect. So, let's look at the two main questions which can come from this. With reference to the internal security of India, discuss the importance of border infrastructure in securing our boundaries. In the era of pandemics, migratory bird species pose a new threat to the health of both humans and animals, critically analyzed. Now here, in this question, this question deals with what we did in the first topic that what is the importance of border infrastructure one of you asked me what is the solution see as of right now as of right now the fact of the matter see LAC is recognized by international institutions but it's not a formal line understand this formal line and informal line are two different words that is UN recognized LOC this is an agreement between India and China okay so when we talk about border infrastructure as of right now border roads need to be tank capable which is that you can mobilize a lot of resources and tanks can be pushed into this sector the fact that we have a lot of deployment in this sector but the problem is but the problem is this deployment is not matched with the same type of infrastructure which the Chinese are making on their side so what we need to do is that the time of response the time of deployment needs to be reduced to the minimum possible which can only be done through border infrastructure so it's a GS paper 2-3 question now in the era of pandemics and we do live in that migratory bird species pose a new threat to the health of both humans and animals critically analyzed so you can't be fully you can't be fully critical saying kill all birds that can't be your solution but the fact of the matter here is that we need to find a connection between diseases spreading via migratory bird species we need to find a solution to if there is a connection like that we need to find a solution to that and because most of these flus can be transferred to humans even bird flu becomes lethal for it, for humans therefore there is a need to understand the larger concept in that regard so with this I would like to end the session I hope you found these 50 minutes fruitful and I'll be back on Tuesday again with CNA but remember you can always check your knowledge after this session in our telegram channel just go to our telegram channel subscribe to us there will be a quiz as soon as this session is over and I hope that you found this session extremely useful for your preparation thank you so much and do like share and subscribe to our channel as much as possible if you're appreciating our efforts thank you Take care. Bye-bye. And you can write these answers and send it to us. Everything is given in the link in the, in the description itself. Thank you. Take care.